Hey guys, National Sales Coach Wade Conway coming at you. Talking about my book, I'm just going over some of the chapters in there for my podcast this week. Um, this one's called Giving Up Control. And what I mean by that is in the golf swing, you really have to kind of give up control to gain control is what they call it. So nothing really good comes from trying to force your motion. So only bad things can happen when you're really trying to manipulate a golf club that's going 100 and something miles per hour for your better players in the middle of the process. You know, you just can't mess with a motion like that. Um, just a few degrees of rotation of the head with a golf club going that fast can lead to a golf ball going 30, 40, 50, 100 yards offline from somewhere from in the middle of the fairway to, you know, in the woods or off the golf course in a bound, out of bounds or in the water. So, you know, the swing itself is meant to be like a graceful flowing motion. Think of something like dancers that are moving in unison swaying to the music it's not a, a purposeful uh voluntary muscle action um it's just built from a, a repetition of learning the right positions that you're supposed to be in and the flow of motion so for someone in sales um giving up control to gain control um you might think of that as figuring out what it is that you do best in your sales career and doing more of that and less of all the other things. So a lot of salespeople are what they would be considered high D type personalities in the DISC uh, model. And what that means, they are action takers. They're dominant. They're doers. They're direct. Uh, and so lots of times they just don't have the skill set to manage everything else that they have going on in their business. And, and they don't need to. But what they do need to do is figure out what are the activities it's going to be the most profitable for them to do. And you can go to my website, coachwithwade.com, and look at the book resources page and get some examples of what I call the chopping block. And it's a list of activities that someone in the mortgage business might be doing uh, from beginning to end. And a good way to figure out what of those activities you should be doing and what should be assigned out to an assistant or other people on the team is if you were just to pick out one activity and you couldn't do anything else for the next day, week, or month, just one single activity, what would be that one activity that you would do? Some people would tell me something along the lines like, I may go do lunch and learns. I love doing that, you know, presentations, webinars, or something like that. But the problem with that is it breaks down when you start looking at it at a more granular level. You can't just show up and start doing webinars. You can't just show up to a lunch and learn. There's got to be an activity that leads up to that. So if it's just one single activity, what it would be. And it usually ends up as one of the most leveraged things that you can do is getting on the phone and having conversations with people and then following that up with one-on-ones or maybe even a pop-by to buy somebody's office to meet with them face-to-face. -face. That typically for most salespeople is where the majority of their activity needs to be focused around for starters obviously there's a lot of things that you need to do out there to cast a broader net to build your influence like writing a book think about that for a minute and being able to have a podcast to talk about that book or a video that you can upload to facebook to talk about that you know those some really good things out there but on a granular level getting on the phone is one of the most leveraged activities you can do so what happens to all those other activities that we have on this exhaustive list that we're calling the chopping chopping block well, you need to identify which of those activities that only you can do. What is an activity that this just requires you? Obviously, you're probably not going to have somebody meeting face-to-face -face with potential referral partners, uh, and maybe not with your prospects even. But if you look at other models out there, like a dentist or a doctor, it gives you a really good idea of what it could look like at the most successful sales offices out there in a lot of businesses. So when you go into the dentist, you get greeted by a receptionist. They're probably the ones that might have called you and, and reminded you of your appointment or had a system that texted you to remind you of your appointment. And when you first get there, you don't get to see the dentist. You get sitting in the chair and the hygienist comes in and she chats you up. She cleans your teeth, takes the x-rays, does every little thing that needs to be done. And then the dentist comes in at the last minute to check the x-rays and see if there's any little thing that they needed to do. If you got a cavity or something like that, then they'll schedule you for another appointment. But that's not the dentist doing that. It's somebody else that works for the dentist doing that. So think about your business in the same way. You know, what are the act 
activities that absolutely require you to be there. And you need to find people or systems to do those other activities. A good way to think about how to best use your time is think about how much money that you want to be making a year and divide that in two and use that as an hourly rate. And any task that falls below that hourly rate is something you need to delegate. So if you're wanting to make $250,000 a year, <clears throat> then you're going to be making $125 an hour. And any task that you've got on your list to be doing that's not a $125 an hour task or higher needs to be delegated. So that, that leaves a lot of things that you don't need to be doing in your business. You just need to be doing what's your highest and best use, which is generally out there meeting with the people that have potential to refer you multiple transactions in a year. So your steps are going to be to make out a list of all you do, pick out the activities that only you can do, and delegate the rest of them to or create another system that can do those for you. So you can check out some more resources about that at coachwithwade.com under book resources or check out my website www.neversettleforpar.com. Looking forward to your success. Never settle for par.